We're going to have a look at a few more questions to do with transforming functions. Here's the first one. So we're given a point M, so this is part B of a question. In part A we were given the point M which is 329. Then we're asked basically to see what happens to this function as we have a horizontal stretch by a scale factor of a half followed by a translation of 3 minus 10 and like what happens to that. Um, first off it's just worth kind of noting because they could ask it in a slightly different form. Uh, a horizontal stretch of a scale factor half is the same as f of x going to f of 2x. Okay, so this is what a, a, a stretch, horizontal stretch of a scale factor half would look like in function notation. Okay, what this actually means is that basically the x coordinates are halved, the y coordinates stay the same, but we halve the x coordinates. So instead of having 329, we're just going to end up giving 1.529. So that's the first bit done, followed by a translation of 3 minus 10. Again, let's just see what that would look like in function notation. We basically would end up with f of x minus 3 minus 10. Okay, so the translation 3 units to the right, we represent that by x minus 3, and then 10 units down, so minus 10. Okay, and this one, we, this simply just means that we can, we move the x coordinates by 3, and then we move the y coordinates down by 10. So we're just going to get this. So we're moving the x coordinate, the x coordinate that we've got here, along by 3, and then the y coordinate down by 10. So this is our new point here. Okay, another question. Here we go. Again, we'll skip part A and we'll just look at part B here. So we're given the function y equals e to the uh, power x plus 1 plus 2, and we're asked to translate this by the the vector 3 minus 1. So again we just think about well what actually is, is happening here. So we're basically trying to replace f of x by this function here. So x minus 3 is going to move it to the right by 3 and then minus 1 is going to move it down by 1. Okay so basically all we need to do is, is replace x with x minus 3 and then the minus 1 is going to kind of go on the end like that. So there we go, I've replaced the x with x minus 3 and I've put the minus 1 on the end here. And then I just need to simplify that. So there we go, x minus 3 plus 1 is x minus 2 and then it's plus 1. Okay, and then let's look at one more question like this. So here we go, uh, we, we're given that g of x is 2f of x plus 1 plus 5 and then we're asked to say well what has happened to this function f of x we're told that it was had a vertical stretch by a factor of k followed by a translation okay so first things first well f of x going to 2f of x is a vertical stretch by a factor of 2 well there we go that tells me that k must be 2 I then think about what's happening next. Well, I can think about this f of x going to f of x plus 1 plus 5, which is what this bit here is inside. Well, replacing x with x plus 1 is going to translate it p by minus 1. And this plus 5 here is going to move it up by 5. So there we go x plus 1 plus 5 is the equivalent of a translation by minus 1 and then 5. So p is minus 1 and then q is 5. Okay, and then the last question. Uh, these can sometimes be quite difficult. This is a water wheel with a bucket and the wheel rotates in a constant anti-clockwise direction. Here we go. And it says that the diameter of the wheel is 8 meters the center of the wheel at point A is 2 meters above the water level. And then it basically wants us to model this using a sine function. And then part A says show that A is equal to 4. The first thing to do on this question is to just kind of sketch in some information. So this is what I've got. I know that the diameter is 8. They're measuring the height of the bucket. And we're starting with the bucket at 2 meters above the water level. 
So let's sketch all that information in. Okay, and we want to say that A is 4. Well, A is the amplitude. So think about what's happening to this bucket. Well, the maximum it can be, well, if it's currently at 2 meters, that A is 2 meters above the water, and then the radius is 4, then the maximum point here must be 6. So the maximum the point can get to is 6. And equally, this point here at the very bottom, well, that's, again, if it's currently 2 meters above the water and the radius is 4, then this point must be minus 2. Therefore, we're getting between a maximum of 6, a minimum of minus 2. Therefore, the distance between those two is 8. 8 divided by 2, the amplitude is 4. So even though we can't see the sine graph, we still kind of proceed the same direction, same way as before. So the amplitude is 4. Okay, next one. Uh, the wheel turns at a rate of one rotation every 30 seconds. Show that b equals pi over 15. Okay, we'll just note what we've got here. The, the function we've been given h equals a sine bt plus 2. Well, h is the height and t is the time. Well, they've just told us that the rotation is every 30 seconds. Therefore, the period is 30 seconds because we're, we're measuring with respect to time. So there we go. We just plug this back into our usual period formula. Period equals 2 pi over b. Remember, always use radians unless they tell us to use otherwise. Stick in the 30. 30 equals 2 pi over b. b equals pi over 15. And there we go. That's the second one. And I'm just changing that there. That should be a maximum of 6 and then a minimum of minus 2. But we can see that the period is going to be 30 seconds. Okay, and then part C, uh, well, we've just worked out what the, the formula is. So there we go, h equals 4 sine pi over 15t plus 2. So that's what is the formula that's going to give us the height. Now, it says that we want to find the interval when the bucket is less than 3 meters high in the first 30 seconds. So first off, let's draw a little line again. This is the 3 meters bit because this is the bucket is currently 2 meters. So let's draw the line for 3 meters. Now less than 3 meters is obviously going to be from the start up until when it hits this mark here. And obviously after it re comes back down again from the 3 meter mark all the way back down to, to the, the end of the 30 seconds. So the step number one is to actually find when is the bucket exactly equal to 3 meters. Well to do that, well h is the height, so let's solve this. 3 equals 4 sine pi over 15 t plus 2. We can use a calculator to solve that. And we're going to get t equals 1.19 and t equals 13.8. Again, remember, keep your graphics calculator in radians. And then we just think about logically what's happening. Well, obviously, from t is 0 when it starts up until 1.19, um, that's obviously going to be less than 3 meters. And then when it's greater than 13.9, all the way back around until 30 seconds. Again, that is when it's going to be uh, less than uh, less than the given uh, height of three meters. Okay, so again, that would be our answer.